On this episode of Athletes Anonymous Presents, After the Buzzer, we are here to talk about the NBA draft, which is concluded. Uh, and we also have a lot of NBA transactions going on, NBA rumors, a bunch of other things. We've been gone for, it seems like, forever, even though it's only been a week. And free agency starts this Friday. Let's get to that intro music. I have your co-host, Kiona McKeague, and with me as always are my longtime friends and co-host, Nolan Chang, Jerry Chirai. Say what's up to the pod, boys. Hello. What's hello? Up? I think that's the first time I ever clicked the like start music button and it played like immediately. There was no like weird <laughs> delay. So that was nice. I was like, it's that's, been a minute. It's so. a start. Yeah. I don't know. Does it feel like this is it's been forever since we recorded one of these? <laughs> yeah. It has. Yeah. I, was like, maybe, was I mean, it literally was only last week. Maybe because we did the other one kind of early or something. Um, Maybe. Because there just seems to be did. a ton of news between then and now. <laughs> no? That's no, I think, right. I think there's, actually there has been just a ton of news as well. Like more yeah. than normal. Yeah. But. So, I mean, obviously we've got to get into it. Uh, the NBA draft has concluded. Um, but before that happened, there was a pretty major transaction that occurred um, that we've yet to comment on uh, once on this pod. So... I'm going to throw it over to you first, Jared. Bradley Beal traded to the Suns. We said that he was probably a better fit with the Miami Heat uh, when it was rumored that they were the other suitors for him. Um, But now the deal is done. They have him. You saw the big three-team trade. The Washington Wizards basically got, I think it was like three or four pick swaps and like four second-rounders. And Chris Paul goes to, well, Eventually, he ends up in a different transaction, but he ended up he, in the initial transaction. He was going to the Wizards, uh, but now he's on his way to the Golden State. And then there's a bunch of other smaller players that nobody's ever really heard of, like Ish Wainwright, who I was like, who the hell is that? Um, but yeah. You don't know Ish Wainwright? You don't know Ish? I know Ish Smith. Ish. Yeah, I know Ish Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, so now he's on his way over to uh, Phoenix alongside uh, Bradley Beal. What were your thoughts on the initial trade or the trade, and what are your kind of thoughts of Bradley Beal being in Phoenix with uh, Book and Katie? I mean, for me, I kind of, I kind of said it when I was picking where he was going to end up between Miami and between um, uh, Phoenix. But you know, I, I feel like. Being able to play along a different stars, it'll help him in that regard. Like him and John Wall were a great uh, yeah. backcourt, and mm-hmm. I think between him and Book, they could make it work. Because I think it it, it depends on what role he they decide to use him as. If they use yeah. him as like if they move Book to the one, or they move him to the one, or if they go two, three, four with him and Kate like the, with the KD, it kind mm-hmm. of, that, that's kind of where my my reservations lie in that regard. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think all three of those players need the ball in their hand. And that's the one thing that we've. That's why I thought going to Miami would have been a little bit better of a trade yeah. for him. You know, it, it gives Jimmy off the take. ball yeah. and things like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, the trade's done. He's there. Um, all star games have proven that. I mean, you can put all stars on the court, and as long as they're willing to share the ball and make everybody mm-hmm. else better, it, it can work. It really can work. But at the yeah. same time, uh, is KD going to want to share the ball? Uh, Devin Booker, that's his team. Like, if we're really mm-hmm. putting a, a, a placement of yep. who's the alpha there, it should be D Book because he's putting the time and effort there for mm-hmm. to make his name. And I think, in that regard, for me at least, that's that's what what it is. But don't get me wrong; if they all can fig- if they can figure it out, all three of them, all three of them score very deadly in yeah. many different ways. So. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it's like that's that's just a figuring out process. But it's like that with everything, any team that has a big trade like this in regards. So, mm-hmm. so Nolan, we obviously kind of looking up and down the team. They lost basically all of their depth. Um, they have a What's few that? guys who probably won't be able to return. Uh, mm-hmm. One of those guys that has been mentioned is Tory Craig, who was a pretty large part of their rotation last year. But um, he mm-hmm. made prices way out of um, being able to stay with them. 
Um, looking at the team, I mean, it looks like basically campaign is still there. So they got campaign and then the three guys mentioned, and then obviously they got DeAndre Ayton still. Do they, for you, become the heavy title favorites with this transaction? Um, my hot take is that if they want to be title favorites, they have to do whatever they can to trade Aiton to get supporting cast. Um, main reason for that is because you have too many cooks in the kitchen now. And mm-hmm. the biggest thing that a lot of these super teams, I guess you could say over the last decade, um, if they do have a star center or big man, the game flows through the big man as well. If you have Beal, Booker, mm-hmm. and Katie on the court alongside Aiton, too many cooks in the kitchen. Aiton's not even going to be a worthwhile pick for those who play fantasy. He probably is going to be there for boards and some blocks. Not really much outside of that. Um, especially now that they they got rid of CP3, who was a conductor on the court and would find whoever he needed to. Because um, mm-hmm. campaign, I would I wouldn't start him. Um, I would leave him on the bench because you need him as a vet second unit guy. Uh, mm. But I, I do think that the best option for them is to try to part ways with Aiton in some fashion to get pieces and maybe some picks back. Because uh, I, I I, just don't see... I don't like the idea of making Booker the main ball handling guy. Um, mm. Mainly because it's a bit of a black hole. But he's proven that he can make something happen out of holding the ball for more percentages. Um, Mm -hmm. And especially since we just saw that last playoff series from him, he was the star of that team. KD was not. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I really think that if they can get maybe just, uh, I don't even, maybe like a low priced facilitating guard who doesn't necessarily need the ball in his hands, but someone to bring the up the court. I think Mm -hmm. that'll be better for them in the long run. Yeah, it's hard because I'm like, it, yeah, I mean, suitors wise, it's going to be an interesting thing to see who they can even get in a DeAndre in trade. So, yeah, I agree with that take, though. Um, on the flip side of that trade, I'm going to throw it back to you. Um, CP going to the Warriors. Um, obviously, the Warriors are pretty, you know, um, big on making these moves where they kind of just out of nowhere trade for like d during that one mm-hmm. random year and they, you know, got Wiggins and they got now CP3. Um, so what are your thoughts on CP1 extending his career with the Warriors and not just that, but on the same salary that he was um, going to be paid this year by the Suns, even mm-hmm. though there was all those rumors about him being waived and two the kind of fit with him with Steph and the gang and the gang. I actually think after I kind of had time to mull it over, Mm-hmm. This may be a genius pickup from the Warriors. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, you look at it from a face value. He doesn't fit in the running gun offense. He's not that kind mm-hmm. of player. He's more in the half court set. He can run, um, facilitate, operate in, in pretty much closer to the rim rather than looking for the up court pass. Um, but you have to think about. One, he needs to buy in because we know that there's been, you know, drama between those two teams or those guys in the past, I guess you could say, just because of the battles they've had in the West. Mm -hmm. Um, But two, CP3 has to be willing to come off the bench because really when you look at it, if you rest Steph and Draymond on the first subs out, you can have CP3 run alongside Clay and put in Wiggins there, maybe put him down to the to the four. Mm-hmm. And you have two great guys who can offer, operate off ball. Yeah. And Clay and Wiggins, not necessarily the fastest guys on the team who are going to sprint up court anymore. Um, <laughs> but if they get into that half court set, now you have CP3 operating with two guys who can catch and shoot, as mm-hmm. well as you're going to get young legs in there with Moody or Kaminga. Who knows what big man they're going to try to use there as well. So if, if they want to operate as pretty much two ideal starting units, for their first string and this and the second kind of rotation, this can actually be kind of a crazy lineup to have with the Warriors, especially if they mm-hmm. are able to retain Draymond. Because, like we mentioned in many many pods, Draymond lets the offense flow through him when he's on the court. He's just yeah. that kind of stretch forward. He's not going to be the guy that looks to the rim first. He's going to look for the open man. And mm-hmm. once you have CP3 on there, you're going to allow Draymond a lot more rest. And you can have him operate in those kind of lapses. So mm-hmm. this could be actually pretty dangerous in the West if the Warriors come back even half as good as they did on their championship run. 
mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot more fluid in, in different sets. Yeah. I was like, I honestly I agree wholeheartedly with that take. I was like, honestly, it's, I, it's like you said, initially you're like, what the hell? And then you're kind of like, mm, I mean, Steph always kind of been a shooting guard, technically. You know what I mean? Like, um, but I'm going to swing it over to you, Jared. The last thing we're, we're going to touch on for this trade um, in general. Um, so, obviously, they have CP. He's making $30 million. The rest of those guys are making roughly about the same, if not more. Um, and they got Draymond Green on the outs, who, for the Warriors' you know, perspective, they have always gone way over the tax. They don't really care about the money, it seems. Yeah. Like they just go and spend way far into the tax. Um, so technically, they can still match any deal and bring him back on whatever his max would be. But if you're looking at it from that perspective, and obviously the amount of respect that he's garnered from the organization, and now they make this transaction, do you think that there is a possibility that Draymond does not return? And if he doesn't return, is there a team that you think that's out there that would possibly welcome him in? <laughs> Okay, yeah, the second part of that is easy. But no, the first part I would say, nah, you already know where we're going with that one. Me and Nolan <laughs> talked about it already. But, um, <clears throat> uh. you know, with with the Chris Paul signing, I know there was a lot of drama between him and comments made uh, that he had made against Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, I was watching something, I was reading an okay. article, and I was watching a little clip about it. And so is, is it another... Um, gonna be another jordan poe where he gets punched again in the preseason or you know <laughs> i mean uh, that was that was that's one thing um like you said with the money issue it's not a money it's gonna be never gonna be a money issue in golden state yeah mm -hmm. they don't they don't care about any of that uh they, they just really care about don't winning. yeah they care about winning yeah. championships and and keeping the best team i think for this team to succeed succeed i think nolan hit it on the head you gotta you gotta retain Draymond. uh is it gonna happen um with the little lights that's been shedding here, I, I feel like they're they're gonna off they're gonna um entertain things. And he might entertain things as well, just to see where who's interested and where he can possibly go. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, first first off off the bat, easy is gonna be literally him going to the Lakers. You know, we mm -hmm. talked about him and LeBron's um their friendship and how good they are together, and that's just gonna give another piece in the puzzle to the Lakers in a sense when you think about it mm -hmm. because then LeBron doesn't have to have hold the ball. Nolan said it where the offense can still flow through Draymond. Mm -hmm. We don't need him to score. I mean, not another damn center score except for AD. So you're not really looking at that in that regard. So mm -hmm. you could go there. Um, if you sign and trade, I mean, freak. I think Draymond would be in a... I mean, it'd be a lot of egos, but Draymond in Phoenix, he said he wanted a big man that can literally run the ball through him and bring the ball up the court and not have to shoot. That's mm -hmm. literally like, I mean, I love how Nolan had brought that up when you're talking about Phoenix, but like, I mean, that really makes sense when you want a big man and a guy who can instill defense into the people who need to play defense because they don't, you know, they play on defense only when pushed and him and, and KD supposedly squashed whatever beef they exactly, had. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think that could be a nice little home for him as well in that regard. But even though KD didn't go to his wedding. <laughs> yeah. That's that was yeah, the bread and butter. Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 I, in my opinion right there, that works out in both in on both sides of the trade. So. That would be stupid. If eight It'd be ends stupid, in, in but it would Golden be really State. beneficial for both teams. Yeah, that, no, that's what I mean. It'd be like, great. That's the crazy part. Golden State with CP, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, and Aiden. DeAndre Aiden would be stupid. And they still you have a pretty King decent too. bench there, you know what I mean? Oh, Lord. So. And they would probably still be able to keep all their, like, Looney, Kamingo. Like, Looney, Kamingo, J. Michael Moody. Green, Anthony Lamb. Moody would still be there. That's I know nuts, uh, DiVincenzo man. just uh, opted out, right? So Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he was, he was good for them, too. Woo! But, Damn. Yeah. I mean, I didn't that, even think that, about that, that could be a, a, a quick hot take right there. Well, I'll say this right there before we move off of this real quick. Last thing is if it ends up being a situation where you actually have to – because I, I, I do foresee Draymond still having enough loyalty to the team to being like, if I'm going to go, trade me. So if it's a trade scenario for you guys and he's on like a 
20 million whatever dollar contract that he's on for his next contract are you willing to trade for him in that scenario or do you want to see just him um signing either of you i'd prefer to see him sign uh but i Mm -hmm. do i do agree with that he would probably want the warriors to feel like they can get something in return for him as well Mm -hmm. Um, i just I don't foresee many teams being willing to offer quality packages. DeMar DeRozan. For, for what you want is. Hey, I mean, yeah, I mean, the on, on the off chance, you can't you catch a team that wants to do a soft out. reboot or soft or full kind of rebuild going into that. I think that could be a very viable option. Um, but I just don't see many teams that would look into trying to do something along those lines unless they get something in return. DeRozan for Draymond and Kaminga. Pounce. Wouldn't you want Vooch to go there to take the Draymond spot? You're right. Vooch, <laughs> DeMar, take them all. <laughs> <laughs> Just Jesper, <kidding>. Draymond Green. <laughs> oh, and a 10th anyway. round pick. Oh, no, no, no. my God. <laughs> and a 10th round pick. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. I do think that it's funny because... I think the Warriors probably made the move that is going to be sneakily really good, whereas the Suns, I feel like, will be sneakily not as great. Um, only because, yeah, the fit is a little weird there. But, you know, we'll see. Maybe, you know, stranger things have happened. Um, but, yeah, as we're moving on to the next transaction, next one that happened, I think it happened before. No, actually, it happened after. So we're going to get to the draft first. Um, with the NBA draft, this is the first year – in the history of the NBA draft that we've had uh, five players who all had very different roads to getting into the draft. Um, Now the NBA has cleared the way for different avenues for kids who are coming out of high school. Um, There's the G league um, and the, I was like the G league league. There is the G league uh, and there is the overtime elite league. Um, obviously overseas still viable option. And then clearly, uh, college is, is like the main, you know, stay for players coming out of high school, but now we're seeing more and more players sign up for the G league. Um, we're seeing more and more players get into overtime elite, which for all intents and purposes is sort of like a, even like less talented G league, um, overall, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's slowly growing, but it hasn't yet got there yet as far as talent. But we are getting more players going into those avenues. Obviously, the Thompson brothers, both of them came from the Overtime Elite League. Uh, we had Scoot Henderson coming from the G League. Uh, Victor Webanyaba coming across the sea from uh, France. And then we have um, Brandon Miller, who was the only one to actually play in college. <sighs> Yeah, super, super rare. It's like never happened. Um, and obviously, we had the two brothers being drafted back to back. Uh, I'm going to get you guys the initial reactions on just, first of all, that first part where I mentioned that they are all from different spots and those avenues, what your thoughts are on those. And then we'll kind of get into like the players themselves. Nolan first, like, what are your thoughts on like the fact that now we have so many different ways to get to the NBA? I think we discussed it before. I, I love it. I think that mm-hmm. you we talked about you get these guys who are just pure athletic talents. Mm-hmm. And for lack of a better way of saying it, they don't need school. Like you don't you shouldn't be forcing someone to go to school to because in order to play what? <laughs> because they're <laughs> athletic. There we go. <laughs> um no, but really I just think well it's, played, it, well played. <laughs> it's it's you go to trade schools because you want to learn specifically what you're gonna do mm-hmm. for your career. You work as an apprentice for something because you want to do specifically that, right? You you don't necessarily need to go to one school of liberal arts studies just so you can make the league the next year. It doesn't make any real sense. They're probably going to be taking pretty generic GEs anyways, or just random electives just to get by. Um, Most of the times, the teachers are just letting them slide anyway. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is another topic of conversation for another day. On, That'll be. Maybe right? Team Huddle. Be <laughs> hey! Um, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Hope. The, the uh, fact bro. that there's 
four of the five are from alternate routes um, mm-hmm. in the lo- f- top five picks. Um, so I, I, I have nothing else really to say about it. I, I just think that it's great for the for the cause. Mm-hmm. It's great for look for the league, and it's probably going to change a lot of dynamics for years to come. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to ruin the NCAA, mm-hmm. but I can see where some kind of overlaps may hit. Um, but yeah, I'd say for the top five picks, um, the main thing, I just don't understand the Brandon Miller and the Hornets. I, I don't, you know, I'm hoping that he proves us all wrong and that he turns out to be a great wing guard for them. Um, but I was really thinking Scoot Henderson would have been the right pick for them. And I, well, they, did said have it both, they both had a reworkout right before the draft, too. So yeah. maybe Miller showed something different in that regard. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, that, I'm, because that's I, I, saw the, like, I saw the callback. I saw the I, callback I, from I both of them. I felt like Scoot would have been a nicer fit for them. But at the same time, there is potential for Brendan Miller to completely prove everybody wrong with mm-hmm. their dismay on it. Mm-hmm. Um, Portland, why do you still have your pick? Why did you still have your pick? We've talked about it each and every single episode. Either trade for help for Dame or trade Dame. And, you know, there's a lot of hoopla going around about Dame's like, I'm still trying to contend with this team. No, you're not. You're just saving face. We know that Portland's not going to be a championship contender this year. Probably not going to be a championship contender next year unless they give something back to you guys. So for them to pick up Scoot Henderson... Two undersized guards in a running gun offense. Both of them are probably one's a good shooter, one is an okay shooter. And now, what are you going to do? Just going to try to turn into the Warriors? I, I don't know how this is going to work out, and I really do not like it. It's like running back with CJ McCollum, right? Yeah, but at least CJ, you know what he's doing. At least CJ could shoot, and he could defend, (laughs) right? Come on. The, I mean, the it's it's funny because the projected lineup is going to be Scoot, Dame, Simons, um, oh, Grant, and Nurkic. So, I mean, because obviously you can't really just push Simons to the bench. I mean, he's making 25 mil. He was a starter. Scoot, uh, I mean, you put all your, you know what I mean? You put all your chips in there. So you're kind of hoping that he ends gotta, up being the guy. You give him the opportunity, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Like, you can't not when you're yeah. picking him third overall. Um, yeah, I mean, I was going to kind of throw that to you too, Jared. I mean, your initial reaction to the fact that not only did they not trade the pick, um, but they did, in fact, end up drafting Scoot Henderson. Obviously highly coveted. There were a lot of teams calling about that pick uh, because after he fell to them, I'm sure there was a bunch of players or a bunch of people being offered. Um, but with the market being where it is, where it's like this weird, you know, they had the Rudy Gobert. And then you had like the later we're talking about it, the John Collins, you know what I mean? Like just like where yeah, Rudy Gay. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. So it's like you're like, where are we finding the balance in between? Like, so um Tony, you what was your initial reaction of them drafting Scoot? And do you think that this is foreshadowing of, you know, maybe Dame getting moved to another team like the Miami Heat? Well, I, I had the same initial reaction as Nolan. It's what the hell are you doing? Either one's got to stay, one's got to go. Like that, that was the one thing. I mean, we talked about it mm-hmm. before and off the pod about that. That That's literally what needs to happen. Um, I don't see the foreshadowing of moving Dame because of mm. the way things have been. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk of Dame having to um, like – share the court or maintain the spotlight with him when we all should like it's kind of like the whole Bradley Beal thing that I talked about where it's D books team it's the same thing it's Dame Lillard's team Scoot Henderson has to live under that shadow he can be mentored he can uh, under he can be taught in the sense of how to be an undersized guard in this league because like Nolan said you got two small guards small guards I mean I'm just saying they're like mid-size like they're small and they can get exposed very it's easily. A, it's a new position. It's not the small forward anymore. It's the small guard. Yeah, you're a small guard. <laughs> you have exactly a small guard and now. a shooting yeah. guard. But you got small guard and a point guard now. <laughs> so traditionally. Point guard, shooting guard, small guard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I mean, it's basically what we got now. Yeah. Or you could be ex, ex SG since we already have an SG. So extra small guard. Yeah. Yep, there you go. No, <laughs> uh, yeah. So for me... Um, I, I it was very interesting. Like you said, Scoot dropped to the three, 
where Nolan mm-hmm. thought, like Nolan thought as well, that he was probably going to go with two. So when it fell, you're entertaining all these calls. And in all honesty, like there had to be some some calls that came in that you were like, mm-hmm. you had to, you're like, okay, I can give up the pick for this player. I can give a pick and a player for these players. It's because, funny because I, I, mean, I, I just imagine there weren't, like, there wasn't too many suitors who they felt like they could reset like the team with like obviously i feel like you probably had like us we probably called but are you trading the number three for zach levine probably not yeah um then you got like teams like i don't know there was a few others like i'm sure phoenix probably called at some point um miami even like i mean there's there's probably teams that called for one was either for dame or the other one was for the number three overall pick and i just yeah man it's like it sucks because if you like kind of like really really looked at everything it's like the teams that make sense don't have the assets and then the teams that have the assets don't make sense you know what i mean so it's like but like even even if like your team called i would say like trade you you've been trying to offload damon Vu, I mean, Vuch and um demar i was like dude just train that for trust me if that could have happened for I, dame i, I, and, I guarantee you know I mean? they would have done it like the two I of them and, and somebody else mm. because if you're trying to reset mm. i mean why not take your number number three pick you're gonna take yeah. a point card anyway and then you mm. bring all these veteran players to help um fill mm. the load as well as veteran leadership as well as like they're big names on their team so i mean Mm -hmm. for me it's it's, that's kind of where it was and if you were going to trade the three away like you want you you'd still want role players for not role players but like Mm -hmm. noted role players that will help dame because we talked about it from the beginning of the time in this pod that Mm -hmm. get the man some help it doesn't matter really who it is it's just get him some help and that's literally what where it is for me with that yeah i mean it just sucks because i'm like really the only one i saw that I was like, I think that would have helped was like the, maybe the Brandon Ingram and, or um, Zion Williamson. And that would have been was like, that would have been awesome too. Yeah. And then there was like the rumors of, um, what was that? Oh, Jalen Brown. Like if Jalen Brown had actually been available, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was one of those things like, I feel like there was only so many guys that they would have targeted with that three that it just became, like I said, I don't know where the I market mean, it could is have been now, the man. Nets. You could have just had the Nets all over again yeah. and just had well, a couple was, players with like seven that was picks. One and, for you know sure what I mean that, too? Like yeah. that that's something that would have been like, hey, if we're trying to rebuild, we're not rebuilding mm-hmm. now. We're just taking yep. all these picks and we're gonna build from there. And that was and, one of those and hard people wins, the yeah. Yeah. assets part of it a lot. And I was like, just, just rebuild. Find your yeah. game in the future. You're gonna be I good. think that was that was one of those moments. Like I think the Nets probably were one of those teams that got the closest because but you know, I feel like the Nets were trying to like pull Dame where they were like trying to like like pull Mikal. So it became it became one of those like, no no no, you give us your best player. We want to keep ours <laughs> like moments. And I was just like because obviously like all the way up until the draft, I think Dame was like tweeting out like he's like oh that core looked nice like stuff like that where it's just like <laughs> he's like talking about like macau and all this kind of stuff like how he would fit there which we have all mentioned on pod would be a mm-hmm. great fantastic fit for him but yeah it's funny it just sucks that the deal never got done um yeah. so we didn't get the blockbuster there but we did yeah. kind of get a bunch of like other moves kind of moving on to the next part of the or the later part of the top five that we were talking about the Thompson brothers go back to back um, with the Rockets and uh, Detroit Pistons, right? Yes. Um, so Amen goes to the Rockets. Rockets. He's a solid playmaking point guard kind of guy. I mean, he's very athletic. Uh, he's been compared to John Morant. Um, and then you got on the flip side of that, you got his brother who is more of a 3 and D type of guy. Um, and he's going to the Pistons. So first, your thoughts on the brothers. First in history to ever go back to back um in the draft in the first round. And um on top of that five. <laughs> Yeah, which is just, I was like, your parents are so happy. Right Let's now. Go! <laughs> like, we're getting two houses. One from yeah, each of them. <laughs> they were literally like celebrating the first brother in the interview. Like they were interviewing right after he got picked while the other brother was like getting drafted. So I was just like, damn, like can you imagine as parents? But anyway, so Jared, first to you. Brothers getting drafted back to back. What are your thoughts on either, or if you've seen anything on them, and just in general, like the fact that they got drafted that way? 
I mean, like you said, awesome for the family uh, mm -hmm. to raise not just one but two athletes that mm -hmm. that get you into the top five. Uh, great thing for the NBA as well, just to show yeah. that, like, hey, it's getting noted. It's not like it's not like the Lopez brothers where you got the shitty Lopez and I got the good <laughs> Lopez, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but at the same time, in in, in the regard of uh, where they got drafted and who they got drafted to, I'm I'm gonna say. Um, I don't want to mix them up. That's why I'm looking at this. Again. Amen is Houston. Yeah. yeah. Osir, yeah. I would say that's a great fit for him mm -hmm. because I think, what was it? Monty went there, right? So it's a great uh, yeah. it's a great person to learn under and they can mold. Is it, and we, we know. Is it pronounced Osir or Osar? Osar? I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know. I, I, I don't want to like, mispronounce it. I, I don't even know because on, on the broadcast, there was like three different pronunciations of it. It's right. like, Where one is was like, uh, Osir. One was like Osir. One was like Osir. Where's, and I was where's, like, Google, right, where's Wikipedia when you need it? No. Yeah. Either way. But yeah. Manuel so that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So, so that brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Him being in, in Detroit, I think it's going to be a, a great thing. Um, like mm -hmm. I said, Monty Williams, uh, we already know what kind of culture he can cultivate as well as um, how he can mold players very well into being great superstars. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, these two, these two, they're not shabby players, you know, I mean, you go into top five, you're playing tough positions nowadays as point guards and shooting guards. Um, that's where, so for me, that's for that brother, I would say Detroit, amazing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Houston pick was very interesting for me for Amen. Because mm -hmm. you got Kevin Porter Jr. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at their depth chart right now and where they placed him. He's fifth as a point guard, and that's what you're drafted as. But he's mm -hmm. first as a small forward. As I wouldn't, I, I get you know you've been riding with Kevin Porter and you got all this. Like he's got the mm -hmm. experience and all this, but I mean, don't you just put him there and then move everybody else down? Yeah, or, you know what I mean? Weird, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's like you you gonna put this kid at small forward? You're gonna play freaking the Lakers and this kid mm -hmm. got a guard LeBron James. I'm like, let's be real about this. Like, you're going to kind of, you kind of look at it in that guard, unless, unless, you know, the one they're going one, two, three, and they're going small, small ball. And they, mm -hmm. they switch up the matchups that way. It's fine, whatever. But I mean, you kind of would want to see him play, especially as a top four pick. Yeah. Right? You want to mm -hmm. see him play in his position. kind of what we talked about with Scoot. You're going to put Scoot into that lineup, even if they had mm -hmm. nobody before or Dame's there. Like You're going to put him as a point guard and move everybody else down in that mm -hmm. regard because you want it to be about your young growth. And yeah. Houston's a young team, you know? Yeah. Houston really is young. a young team, so you want to insert him there and then establish and then build from there as well. He can learn yeah. from Kevin Porter Jr. He can learn from the DJ Augustines and Jalen Greens and everybody mm -hmm. else who's there, but like put him in his proper position so you can mold him into a good player. And I think mm -hmm. for me, I, I think that's where the brother has the upper hand because in Detroit, they got crap. We talked about it. You know, they trade away yeah. their best player in that one thing and you have the with whatever Bogdanovich it is, because I never know, <laughs> right? It's a, it's one of them. Bogdan, that, no, I was like Boyan. that one. Yeah. yeah, is it Boyan? Yeah, it's Boyan. I don't know. Ah, yeah. See, so they so, see, see exactly. So they have that yeah, one, no, that and works. so for me, it's like you know they're they're gonna invest in him in that regard. You mm -hmm. know, they, yeah. I think they moved Bogdanovich. Like I'm looking at it, they moved Bogdanovich to power forward and inserted him at the three. Yeah. I mean, and that's so like the normal, like, normalcy now, moving the yeah, traditional yeah. small forward. Three and fours. Three yeah. and fours move. Yeah. I mean, Cade, Ivy, Thompson, mm -hmm. Bogdan, and Wiseman. Uh, Wiseman. Like, this and is you still have Bagley and Bagley. Killian Hayes. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's yeah. a solid looking team, man. That's, that's They're a building a squad right over there. Yeah, solid seven. For sure. Um, throwing it over to you, Nolan. Obviously, like, we got them to going over to where they're at. You already mentioned your thoughts on Brandon Miller. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the crown jewel of this draft uh, was obviously the number one overall draft pick, Victor Wibanyama. Um, he will be joining a Spurs team that's very young, um, obviously very, you know, kind of not competitive. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yet, exactly. Um, and there's a lot of rumors out there that they actually may be interested in possibly trying to like make moves in order to speed up his, um, you know, contention success. and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, success. Yeah, that's a greater, better way of putting it. Um, what are your thoughts on that idea? Like, would you go with trying to get him the pieces to make him 
you know, accelerate a little bit more or are you kind of like slow rolling it with Victor? Why would you need to slow roll it with Victor? Right? If you if he's showing any signs of being what we pretty much imagine him to be in the NBA, mm-hmm. go full tilt. Because you only have pop for so many more years. Why slow roll it? You have the one of That's the greatest minds in NBA history as a coach on that bench. Go all in. Um yeah. you have these younger guys right now, like Sochan and um What's the other boy, guy's name? Keldon Johnson. Keldon Johnson. There you go. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> great Devin guys Vassell. for a team that was, <laughs> was like, really yeah. crappy. I have no issues with them just trading those guys all the way right now. <laughs> no, no. Really, though. No, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> like, I, 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 yeah. I don't think there's anybody on their roster as I'm looking at their yeah, roster that, that is stay. worth keeping. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you, you don't need point, to yeah. keep any exactly. one of them. And what mm-hmm. I think would be a dark horse move for them to do, because I believe I just saw the, the headline today. Darius Garland is open to oh. a trade, or the Cavaliers <laughs> are open like, to trading like, Darius Garland. Dame. <laughs> if you can, because Darius Garland is going to be a nice facilitator for Pop's offense. And yep. he's not, he's pretty decent at defense, and um, he's going to be cheaper. Compared to a yeah. lot of all these star guards. Mm-hmm. If you can get him over there for pieces, picks, and then start building around those two guys. Because Darius Garland, I think, is what? Maybe 23? 24? 23. 23. Yeah, 23. He's, he's probably he's still like young. Yeah. You can run a nice ship with those two guys at the helm. And I think that could be something very dangerous if the Spurs are willing to not hold on to any of the pieces that, sure, have been there through the trials and tribulations of the last couple seasons. But at this point, you have Victor now. It doesn't matter who was on your team. That's got to that. be the first move, like a yeah. guard. Yeah. That's a yeah. really, yeah. So I think it's it's full Trey tilt. Trey Jones full to time. the Cavs. And could you imagine if Chris Paul had gone to them? That See, that's the one that everybody <laughs> really was like, that's the one everybody was like rumoring. Like if he got waived, he yeah. was considering it because I'm like, man, CP with Victor would have been just. What about yeah. this too? And I, I know it's, I believe he hasn't. This is fun. This is this is really. Fun. <laughs> what about like, now that I think about it? Because this guy has also opted out of his mm-hmm. player op- player option. Um, Kuzma signing over there just to have a scoring punch. You that get, was such. That no, was such but really, a you don't need to have a long term. <laughs> no, I I agree that he would be like a. And solid you have <laughs> Greg Popovich teaching him how to do a rotational to defense because like... we always said he was a crappy defender, didn't make the right <laughs> IQ moves. You have Greg Pop now coaching him. I, I think that could be like a win-win. A Steph Curry esque. Okay, like, and you drop Why would James Harden. That's a nut. See, that's a. Tank I thought that's right where you. I thought that's where you were going. I thought <laughs> well, you were going to be honest. is cheaper. I'm not. I don't know what the Spurs have, but they're still considered the. Okay, okay. Well, you were building it up like he. They were going to sign somebody. I'm saying in tandem with. No, no, no. I, 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 I get what you're saying. No, don't get me wrong. I get what you're saying. Don't get me wrong. I get what you're saying. That's a great move. I get what you say. The way you built it up. The way you built it up. I was like, bro, we're getting a name right now. Yeah. It was a that's a great move. Get it. Get it. Get it. Yeah, it. drink your drink your soda. <laughs> uh, coffee. Coffee. Because you did you did a whole set of like no, just picture this. Uh, he just <laughs> opted out of his player option. I was like, <laughs> you Michael Kuzma. Jordan, no longer an owner, comes out of retirement. <laughs> And proves that he is the uh, greatest. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll play you guys. The title with Victor, <laughs> bruh. You win the title uh, with Victor, man. I don't know what the hell is gonna happen. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> then you We're need not, to shut up for life. Then, then I, then I, then I, like, yeah. Well, you're gonna yeah, carry anyway. by Victor. That's why. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So obviously, like, he's like a super. Like interesting prospect. Like I, mm-hmm. I think this is one of those prospects that I myself have been most hyped about, like in a while, because he's just like a different caliber of guy. And it's one of those where you like really hope, you really hope that nothing terrible happens and that he ends up being who he's supposed to be. Why would you um, speak that into existence? <laughs> You know, there's just there's. I just you gotta be. You don't want to get let down. Right? The, the, yeah. Yeah. We, we talked about the, yeah. the 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 letdowns in in a different. Pod oh, there's a, a different there's segment, been a you know? ton of them. Yeah, you know, so. I mean, 
Yeah. So, I mean, but, like, is there anybody out there that you, besides James Harden, no? That's that's the guy right <laughs> there. Jalen Brown? That's I mean, one. you don't only talk about one. these one-two punches that you can do and you can get rid of players for and you create space Darius for. Darius Jalen like, Brown? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you might be able to because Darius is only on, like, a nine mil salary. That's why I say he's he's. I think his doesn't kick in for another year or yeah. something like that. Because he he's got like, I think a couple more years but, before I mean, his big would, kicks in. The the one issue. I mean, it really depends on how they want to build around Victor. What they want, yeah. What they want to do with if him. you if you do try to make that trade for Jalen Brown, you have to understand the next five years are going to be a yeah. cap chokehold yeah. on you guys. So yeah. if you want to yeah. be able to retain Victor by the end of his rookie contract as well, now you have to kind of split the difference on it, right? Yeah. Well, James Harden will yeah. retire by then, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I think we'd all agree. I mean, that, that'd be that, real, like, right? James Harden should idea. retire by <laughs> in the five years and whatever, yeah. right? Or, yeah. Assume, uh, if ass- he wants to, stay, he takes a pay cut. Like assuming this kid is like for real. Like I think we're all in agreement that this is like this might be one of those opportunities where like trade deadline you like go all in if you haven't already decided before that that you want to go all in. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of those rare like you use his rookie contract to like get the most out of him i mean like, and the crazy yeah. part is too you got to think about it and i just read the article about it he's skipping the the fibas to play in the summer league to build with oh San is Antonio. he yeah i wow, swear man, I, 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 swear, no sense. I swear i just saw wow i swear i just saw webby will be joined will join spurs in vegas summer league wow good, good. okay that's yeah. big news because i, I thought i saw he something said he was going to stay in FIBA. yeah so he wow. will not be participating in this summer's FIBA World Cup, so he can focus Man, why on the preparing fi- for why his it Vegas rookie season. Be like one month later, yeah. that would have been you so. Cool. So when I when I saw that, that I mean, would be? this is Ooh. him committing Ooh. and being all in as well for them. You know what I mean? Oh. So yeah, of like, course. so if he's showing this, I think that also attracts a lot more people. Like, hey, this kid isn't about just international basketball. Like, he wants yeah. to make it in the NBA. Well, I mean, he's he's only what, can help him get right here. now. He's uh nineteen. He's got his whole career to go back and play exactly. FIBA and the Olympics. Yeah. Exactly. I think yeah. he'll be all right. But at the same time, like you, you know, that that was another big name that was going to be for France and everything yep. and whatnot. Yeah. So, so I mean, in that regard, I, I think that's that. It, like I said, it speaks mountains of character to him by choosing the NBA before it, mm-hmm. as sure. well as, um, as he trying should. to build his game. And, and, <laughs> and I think it, it's good because it builds a good relationship in the summer league with him and, yeah. you know, everybody in general. And then he, I mean, look at all the superstars he already got to meet. You seen a picture with what Elliot, um, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and was it Ginobili <laughs> or, or was it somebody, was somebody. And I, I was just like, damn, that was kind of crazy. It was Mono Ginobili. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's it's a good company to keep. Exactly. Only, only other two guys that are drafted number one overall for that organization want them yep. some chips. So that's uh, you got a guy like Sean a, Elliott who can play great, great defense yeah. and move around the ball. Like, I mean, he's not the same size as Webby, but at the same time, like that's the kind of the same play style that you're gonna have yeah. is the Sean Elliott play style. Now we're getting yeah. hyped up so. so much for this guy. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I okay. Like, I, I don't want to yeah, jinx yeah. it. But I really yeah. hope, I really, really hope it's not Chet. Like, because Chet had that huge upside. We're talking about Chet, who is amazing. Yeah. And then that let down. And I, I'm excited to see Chet this year, too. I'm excited like, to see Chet come back, Chet, man. Oh, I was just because, like, it was it was a name and, like, he, the boy could shoot. You know, he was a good yeah. size. And he was, I think I it's because Victor's, like, a little something. more filled out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's a little more. He's still thin, but he's a little more. Like, Chet. <laughs> Like just Chet's a like just a little, yeah. Like Chet's a he, he took that, a like, little bit of a, a a weight bump this this whole season he had off. Yeah, which yeah. I give him credit because you can't build mm-hmm. muscle naturally that fast. So I mean, yeah, for yeah. him to at least make any size, he's gonna be he's, make some kind there. of improvement, right? No, yeah. no NBA player necessarily starts jacked as hell, right? They they start yeah. building it up as they go yeah. along in their career. Mm-hmm. I mean, we went I mean, we can go down the line with it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, look like a linebacker, but anyway. Um, yeah, we're not gonna. We're See, gonna move but off he of that didn't one. have to worry about school. He just balled and worked out every day. There you go. <laughs> That's true. Uh, it's funny because I'm like, I foresee some possible negative drawbacks because there are probably going to be a lot of guys who are like, ah, I don't need school, and they go, mm-hmm. and then like, they're not as great as they think they are, and then you know what I mean. But they don't have anything to fall back on. But yeah, it's going to be it's like a yeah, exactly. It's like a give and take of like the adulthood stuff. Um, I was going to mention some other transactions, but I think 
you know, we we got to that conversation. We got to the good one. heart of it. Yeah, that was like the big majority one because there was like smaller transactions. Obviously, there was the John Collins one. I think we were all in agreement that that was like a stupid trade. <laughs> it's like, um, I mean, like good for the Jazz, obviously. Um, they did get their guy to put next to Markin in there, but why like wouldn't you go weird... after Dejounte? Though? Yeah, that's yeah. It's so it's a weird situation with that team. Um, I'm so curious to see what they even do with him. Um, yeah, I mean, unless you guys you guys want to hit on rumors, we can. I mean, mm. we, times we're getting near to the end there. I think. All right. No, I think Jared we're good said, for this one. Just give we'll me a year we'll name. All in. <laughs> nay, <laughs> nay. Yeah. All right. Right on. So yeah, I think that'll do it for us here on this episode of After the Buzzer. We're gonna get into sort of things as they progress. Um, there are a lot of things swinging around right now. Obviously, free agency starts on Friday um, at midnight. So you know. Just get them phones ready because I guarantee it's going to be blowing up around that time. There's going to be some random transactions that hit uh, yeah. right off the rip. So, um, yeah, uh, that'll do it for us here on this episode. Thank you for joining us for this episode of After the Buzzer where we talk everything in the NBA. Uh, boys, I'm just going to drop your socials on the bottom of wherever this is posted. Um, so we that's how we'll – right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I cool. like it. All right. I like it. I was like, we, I was like, we'd be dropping our socials in every single one of these, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure. But what if they're listening to us for the very <laughs> first time? Nobody's here by the end. Yeah. If you're listening, then the our all of our socials will be listed in the description for this podcast or in the description for this YouTube video. If you're catching us there, um, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. But you can follow us on Instagram at the Point Soy Podcast for all of our reels. Our socials are there as well. Are they? Is it? <laughs> yes. I mean, we're tagging I'm... every post. So, gotcha. There you go. Yeah. So, there you go. So, comment there if you have any <laughs> questions, concerns, takes on any of the things that we said. Do you think Victor Webinyama is going to be a bust? Who knows? Uh, we're moving on. Thank you for joining us. As always, it has been a pleasure. It's been a joy from all of us here at Lip Boy and Soy. Love. Bang, bang. Shoots then, but uh.